Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're here another Sunday sew along and we are in a summer of tutorials. <laughs> so today I am uh, walking you through how I do my buttons and buttonholes. I know that can be very scary for some of you. I am using the Melody Dolman shirt by uh, Love Notions. This is a shirt for my daughter. Um, but yeah, I'm showing you how I put in the buttons and buttonholes into this one. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful if you're having a little bit of apprehension about cutting into fabric because buttonholes can be a little scary, a little intimidating. Um, as always, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll answer those as soon as possible. Um, if you would like to help support the channel, and I do have a coffee account, which is like a virtual tip jar that is linked down below. All the money that uh, goes to that goes right back into the channel. Um, equipment, uh, supplies, maintenance on you know the lights, the, the lights camera action, <laughs> um, the software, all that kind of stuff. It goes into helping to maintain all of that. So um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Again, questions down below, and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you again on Tuesday. Bye. All right. So today I'm going to be showing you how I do my buttons and buttonholes. This is a fun process, um, <laughs> and once you get it down, it's pretty easy. Okay, so I've got my daughter's um, Melody Dolman shirt, which just, it's all sewn. It just needs its buttons and buttonholes. So first things, we're going to do the buttonholes first. And um, we're going to be putting the buttonholes on the right side when worn side. So just be aware. You don't want to do like I did and put uh, buttons and buttonholes on the opposite sides because technically women's buttonholes buttonholes are on the right and men's buttonholes are on the left and that can be confusing for people that are used to buttoning their shirt one way <laughs> you put them on the opposite not that I'd know anything about that okay <laughs> what I like to do is actually um, put the shirt on and mark the full bust like where I feel like it's gonna pull my daughter's not here I can't do that today um, and this is a very loose fitting shirt so I'm not too worried about things but um, I am going to this is a simplex and this helps um, space out buttonholes and pleats and all sorts of things really easily. And I will link, I got mine at um, Wawak, and I will link that down in the description box below. But all you're going to do, if I had a, here, we'll pretend that I have marked her. If I have marked her full bust at the point right here, then I know I want a buttonhole, you know, the center of a buttonhole to be right here. So for my machine, my machine starts at the top of a buttonhole, goes down, and then comes back the other side. Um, my old machine started at the bottom, went up, and came back the other side. So you do need to know which way your machine does its buttonholes, because that will determine if you're marking the bottom of the buttonhole or the top of the buttonhole. So I had that was a, an adjustment I had to make with my new machine. So I'm marking the top of my buttonhole. So what I would do is just, you know, I kind of know where I want it to be, and um, I would just kind of move my Simflex. And I've pulled this as wide as it can be, but you know, if my, I could make it smaller if I wanted to do a whole bunch of buttons and do it kind of like that. Um, you could even do it, um, you know, like every other one if you wanted it bigger than this um, you know it's kind of whatever you want to do so you can definitely play around with it but what I do is um, I'm gonna mark the top here and this also this simplex has little markings on here that shows you how far this marking is from the tip so this is a half of an inch away and I'm gonna be using um, half inch buttons so I want mine to be half of an inch away from that fold line and this is a friction pen so I know that this goes away with heat um, so I'm just going to mark half of an inch, and I'm just going to go down and mark right at that half of an inch mark. Now this does, you know, if that were her full bust, I mean, that'd be like at the bottom of the buttonhole. So I may want to mess around with it a little bit, but that's just kind of up to you. Again, this is a very loose fitting shirt, so I'm not too concerned. And that was an arbitrary mark I put in, but... Um, and I, th yeah, I think I'll go ahead and actually, I'm going to stop here and leave the rest of the hem open because she's going to tie this like all the time. All right. So I have marked one, two, three, four, five, six buttonholes. And that's the top of the buttonholes. Again, 
know which way your machine goes because my old machine I would mark the bottom of the buttonhole. So once I have marked those, we are now going to go over to the uh, sewing machine and um, I'm going to show you how my machine makes buttonholes. All right, so I've got my Bernina all set up. This is my newest machine. Um, I am selecting, let's see, this is a Bernina 330. Um, I don't think they make the 330 anymore, but I bought this one used. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on my buttonhole, which is stitch 10 on this machine. I don't know if they're very similar. I don't change any of the settings on it. And then I've got my buttonhole foot, which is a, so let's see, it's foot 3A, I think, if you are a Ber Bernina user. It's easy for me to say. And I'm gonna be using these little show buttons from um, Wawak. So what I have to do is I've got this little slide here and I'm basically measuring my button and then adjusting the slide to be like a good size for that. Um, I have learned that you want it, to, you wanna give it a little wiggle room. You don't wanna make it exactly the size. So I think putting this at like a little above a two maybe. This is also a very thin button. So I think that's probably good. So once I have my little slider the correct size that I want it, I'm going to find my shirt front. And I always start at the bottom of my shirt because if you get a wonky buttonhole, it's better to be at the bottom, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna line this up and I'm paying attention to where I'm lining up my shirt on my, um, with my little lines here because I want all to be Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the tripod. So I'm putting that little blue mark is, um, it's kind of hard for you to see, isn't it? Well, it's right in the center there, right at my um, needle, actually. Well, yeah, that's probably good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold my threads here make sure that everything goes straight and again this could be different for your machine but i'm just going to sew until my red pointer here there's a little red line on the presser foot and then i hit my back button so it's when I can show you, I can take the foot off when I'm finished here and show you. So that is now programmed that size of button for me. So now I can raise this up and I don't clip my threads. I like to live on the edge. Line that up with the next dot. But now I can just go and it makes it the correct size or the size that I just made. I have my hand on there but I really don't need to be doing any of that it kind of it just kind of does all this on its own also make sure that you don't have anything you don't oh see that's all folded up on itself you don't want to be catching anything you don't mean to catch thing that's probably good to check is to also put your button on there and make sure you're good and I think yeah we're good <laughs> I should have done that earlier but you know And now, once I've done all of them, 
I just love, I just think that that is such a pretty buttonhole. Isn't that a pretty buttonhole? I really like it, my Bernina, for that. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through and trim my threads really quickly. This is when you kind of do it chain wise too, it does make trimming excess a little easier as well. Makes it go just a little quicker. And you gotta make sure you clip on both sides of your shirt. You gotta clip those bobbin threads too. Okay. All right. My next step is that I'm going to take fray check, good old Dritz fray track check, and I am going to put a line of this right in the center of my buttonholes, all the way down. And then I am going to hit them with an iron. Um, that was a trick I learned in the bridal workroom. It just kind of softens the fray check and kind of sets it a little quicker. So I'm going to hit those with an iron. And then I'm going to turn this over and do the same thing to the back side of the buttonhole. And then I'll meet you right back here. All right. So once our buttonholes have been um, fray checked and pressed really nicely, we are going to use a buttonhole chisel. I will link. It comes in a little set. It's like a little... Um, Oh, kind of like a little hole punch, almost one that um, takes out like the top of a keyhole button and then the little chisel and it has like a little bitty um, block, like a little wooden block that I've just decimated. So I just use a, <laughs> a self-healing cutting mat now, but these are so easy. This is the best way to open your buttonholes. Again, I'll link it, the little set link down below, but you don't run the risk of cutting anything that's not supposed to be cut. So you're literally just going to put this in the center of the buttonhole and this one's small enough. I just have to do one little wallop and I'm just pushing it into my fabric and that cuts my buttonhole right open really cleanly and without any um, worry of cutting something I'm, you know, going past the buttonhole or whatever. And usually, um, Wherever you take your scissors to get sharpened, they can also sharpen, or kitchen knives, they can sharpen this chisel as well. So this goes in when all my scissors go in. All right, so now we have all of our buttonholes cut open. I'm gonna show you how I mark my, my buttons, where I'm gonna put my buttons. So I'm gonna take my shirt. Hopefully you can, oh, there's a lot of shadow there, sorry. Um, I'm going to take my shirt and I'm going to match it up wrong sides together. So I'm matching it up all the way down the length of the shirt. Putting, in this case, this doesn't have a placket, so it's the facings together. But putting everything wrong sides together. And then I just take pins and stick them right through the center of those buttonholes. But this is a great way to make sure that the tops of your shirts match up, that your hems match up. So sometimes I'll do like a couple at the top and then I'll go down here and do like a couple at the bottom. So if there's any excess that needs to be eased in over a few buttons, that can happen. I think we're pretty good here. All right. So then once we've done that, we're going to flip this over and you have little needles or uh, pins poking up at you, but I'm just going to mark with my friction pen very carefully. If you've got a fabric that doesn't, um, where your friction pen or, or whatever marking tool you have doesn't show up, like dark, for instance, like if this were a black or a navy, um, Taylor's chalk works just as well. Okay. Okay. 
So now I've marked my six buttons. So now we can pull these out. And um, I'm really quickly going to, oh, I'll change out my um, presser foot real quick, but I will show you um, what my buttonhole presser foot looks like, kind of those two marks that I'm putting together when I'm making my buttonhole. So back to the sewing machine. Okay, so I just wanna show you my buttonhole foot. So as you can see, there's that little, oh, maybe you can't see. There's like a little red arrow that's like right there. When this is sewing, it's when this arrow on this matches up with that arrow on there, that's when I hit my back stitch button right here. And then it goes back and finishes off the buttonhole, goes back the other way. And that's what sets the size of my buttonhole. So hopefully that. And then this little window here is where I'm matching up that dot that I made for the top of the buttonhole. And there's like a little, you can see that little guideline there that's the center that I line all that up together. Okay, so now I have put on, this is not a button foot. This is just a really wide foot. You can see there's a, well here, I'll take it off, hold on. There's a really um, wide opening here so I can get a good zigzag in through there. Um, I think there is a button foot. I just don't have it for this machine, but this works fine. <laughs> So I've got that on. And then um, I put it on stitch 11, which is the button foot. But I also have to drop my feed dogs. Over here, you can barely see here, is a button that I press in. And that drops, did you see that drop my feed dogs? So your feed dogs are the little teeth that are right here at the bottom of the machine that feed your fabric through. Well, I've just dropped mine. So now my fabric won't feed through. It'll just stay um, stationary. So this can just do a zigzag back and forth in between the button, which is all a button stitch does. That's really all you're doing. So we'll start at the bottom again. I'm just going to put this here. And I'm going to lay my button down on top of my, there's my blue dot right there. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. God, the allergies are killing me. Okay, so I'm gonna put my button right there on that blue dot. And I'm just gonna bury a needle into one of those holes. Lower my presser foot. I'm gonna hang onto my tails so they don't get all tangled up. And um, go kind of slow, or you could even just walk it, just to make sure, see, that's too wide, that's going to, actually, I think I can just scoot this over, because I've sewn these buttons on here before, I've never needed to adjust it. There we go. So you just wanna make sure you're not gonna accidentally have that needle come down on your button, because that's gonna be no fun for anybody. Okay, and that's all that it is. And then I'm just gonna lift up, and now I don't have to hold my tails because let's just put the rest of these buttons here. Two, three, four, five. These buttons are also from Wawak. They are a natural Akoya shell button. I think they're very pretty and they're all kind of different in color. Just a little different. They feel dainty to me. Okay, so I buried that needle. Um, if, if it is in fact wanting to swing out too wide for your button holes, um, you can just adjust the width. So wherever you adjust your zigzag, the width of your zigzag, you can make that a little smaller or bigger depending on your button and um, get that to hit the holes perfectly. Um, I know that another trick that some people do is, um, which you can totally do, is to take scotch tape and um, tape, oops, sorry, tape your buttons down because um, you can obviously sew through the scotch tape and then it just tears off. 
but that will help keep your um, button where it needs to be. Especially if you have thicker, this is pretty thin fabric and my buttons are thin, so I don't have a lot of like, my presser foot isn't moving them out of the way or anything when I'm sewing them. But that can happen if you've got a little bit of extra bulk. And one more. And this doesn't have a collar. This shirt doesn't have a collar stand. It's a camp collar, so. Oops, sorry. Okay. And then again, just like with the buttonholes, once we've finished sewing everything, then you go through Clip all your threads. And I do find this just, I mean, especially if you're doing um, a regular button down shirt where you have a lot of buttons down the front and then the cuffs and everything else where you feel like you're sitting here forever sewing buttons and buttonholes. Um, sewing them chain style like this does make it a lot quicker. I once made 12 button-up shirt dresses for a bride and her wedding party. And I monogrammed them um, back when I had an embroidery machine. Um, it was quite the project. Oops, sorry. Quite the project. And I got really good at putting in buttonholes and buttons. Because they were shirt dresses. They were like oversized shirts, basically. That... Um, had a lot of buttons down the front because they were longer than a regular shirt. Okay, guys. Now, you can button your shirt and you should be all, oops, <laughs> all oops, ready to go. So that's how I do my buttons and buttonholes. Hope that was helpful. Again, let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll answer those as soon as possible. Bye guys.